Greetings, respective viewers. I'm George from Ireland, so welcome uh, back to my channel. Um, so this video is going to be about um, the Scottish Parliament and the um, uh, probability of a second referendum on breaking up the United Kingdom. Um, and by the way, there was no unionist phrasing, uh, framing in the phrasing of that expression. OK, there was. Um, so the SNP have done it again. They've won their fourth consecutive election to Holyrood. Um, so they got the most votes by, by a long way and they got the most seats, but they don't quite have a majority uh, in the Scottish Parliament. So in terms of the constituency vote, they got almost 48% of the vote. Um, way out in front of the Conservatives on 22%, Labour a bit behind on 21%, the Liberal Democrats on 7%, and the Liberal Democrats, so the Greens on 1%. Alaba, that's um, Alex Salmon's party, founded just a few weeks ago, barely registered, well under 1%. Um, notably, the Scottish Socialist Party didn't even contest the election. And um, you might recall I interviewed uh, the, the um, leader of the Scottish so Socialist Party um, about a year and a half ago before coronavirus in, in Edinburgh. Um, so the SNP's share of the vote's gone up by 1%. Um, the uh, Conservatives unchanged, Labour down 1%, the Liberal Democrats down 1%, the Greens up significantly. Um, so the, the Greens have um, more than doubled um, their vote share. That's in the constituency results. Now, notably, Scotland's got this um, uh, curious system. It's got a blend of first past the post and uh, a sort of um, um, uh, single transferable vote system. So you have one vote for your constituency, MSP, as a member of the Scottish Parliament, and then you have a second vote for the region. So um, the Scottish Parliament's got 129, um, uh, uh, 129 members of Parliament, right? So, um, and about half of those are elected um, for a constituency, one MSP per constituency. Um, and then there are regional lists as well. So they'll group several constituencies together and um, they will then um, uh, they will then um, give uh, on the regional list top up the parties that didn't so to do so well on the in the constituency section. So um, uh, there'll be about um, eight constituencies together and there'll be, say, seven MSPs for that region. And the regions are Glasgow, South West Scotland, Central Scotland, Highlands and Islands and so forth. So if it were only constituencies, then the SNP would have uh, really won because um, the, the, the uh, their opponents, the Conservatives only took five constituencies, Labour only took two constituencies and the Liberal Democrats only took um, uh two constituencies as well. So five Conservative plus two Labour plus two Liberal Democrats, that's nine. So out of roughly um, 65 constituencies, uh, the SNP took 56 of them. And notably, Westminster still uses first past the post. No other legislature in the United Kingdom is solely first past the post, and is, is Westminster has um, most of the power. Um, um, this, this first past the post used to work against the SNP. You go back to 1992, the Scottish National Party had only two members of parliament. Remember in 2015, they won 56 members of parliament out of Scotland's 59. That's members of the Westminster Parliament, by the way. But now the SNP is big. First past the post suits them just fine. Um, so this, this is proof, if, if we ever we needed it as sophologists, that um, voting systems change voting behaviour. There's no point in throwing away your vote on a minor party which doesn't have a snowball and health chance of, of, of winning a seat. Um, it's sort of negative cohesion. I've got to vote for a party to keep out one I dislike even more. And my favourite party, if it's a very minor one, I can't even vote for, no point voting for them if they're the Greens or whatever, or UKIP or something. It's really, in Scotland, there are only three which um, are significant, which are obviously the SNP, Labour and the Conservatives. Um, so to, to think that um, uh, Labour held the lion's share of, of representation in Scotland for decades, from 1955 right through to 2007, won virtually everything, Westminster elections, European elections, local elections, elections of the Scottish Parliament, the first two, Labour won. Okay, so there'd be not, there'd be not, there's not been not much change. The SNP, they took air, um, the town of Ayr, A-Y-R, by a mere 170 um, votes. So um, then um, in the, uh, I was going to point out um, what, what happened in the in the regional um, uh, lists. So um, the, uh, 
in, in the regional system, voting was quite it was quite different. The um, SNP didn't do as well um, in in constituency vote. They got forty percent of the vote. The Conservatives did a little bit better than they did in the um, constituency votes. They got um, twenty three point five percent of the vote. Labour did much worse in the regional vote than they did in the well considerably worse than they did in the. Um, uh, constituency vote, they got 18% of the vote as opposed to 21% in constituencies. The Greens did far better, 1.3% in the constituency vote and 8% in the regional vote. The, the Liberal Democrats, um, uh, they did not um, They did um, a tiny bit worse, really 5%. The Alaba party, 1.7% in the regional vote. In the constituency vote, they just didn't even feature. We don't even bother to mention them. They're well under 1%. Um, so this this um, regional system has really helped the um, Conservatives give them a few more. Uh, it's, it's helped Labour a lot. Um, the Greens, it's helped hugely. They've got eight members of the Scottish Parliament, um, all regional. They would have none through the constituency system. The Liberal Democrats has helped a tiny bit. So um, anyway, the, the turnout was quite high at 63% of people um, casting their ballots. So of the 129 people who are going to be members of the Scottish Parliament, 64 are SNP. Remember, 65 is the magic number. 65 is what you need for a majority. The um, uh, Conservatives, the second biggest party in the Scottish Parliament, again, with 31 seats. Remember the Conservatives of the dark days of 1997, when the Tory party was extinct as a parliamentary party in Caledonia. 2001, not winning a single Westminster seat. Obviously, 99 won a few in Holyrood. Um, 2005, finally taking back somewhere in Scotland. The the, the areas where the um, Conservative and Unionist Party does well in North Britain is uh, the border area or else Aberdeenshire. Um, the Liberal Democrats, the very fringe of the, the, of the country, the very fringe of the United Kingdom, Orkney, Shetland, um, Caithness, Ross, places like that. Um, and uh, the late Charles Kennedy, who was leader of the Liberal Democrats, he came from, um, I was at Skye and Loch Harbour, that, that was his constituency. Sir Ming Campbell, leader of the Liberal Democrats not so long ago, he represented a Fife constituency. So this is rural Scotland where the Liberal Democrats um, have some sort of a presence. Um, uh, OK, so Labour's only got 22 seats in the Scottish Parliament, which might seem um, uh, might, might seem a bit unfair to them. They got considerably less representation than the Conservative and uh, Unionist Party. But their leader, Anas Sawar, he's a bullient saying Labour is back on the pitch um, because remember, Labour um, was is, is uh, quite weak in Scotland. Um, for some time, which was an astonishing turnaround from the Blair era when it was mighty. The Liberal Democrats, only four people in the Scottish Parliament, where the Greens had got eight. So the Greens are stronger in North Britain than they are anywhere else in the United Kingdom. So remember, the Greens are pro-separation. So the SNP on its own can't vote through uh, um, legislation on a second referendum. But with those eight Greens, that easily gets them over the line. They would need 65 votes to pass that. But with the Greens, then they're going to get more than that. They're going to get 72, assuming all the SNP and all the Greens vote for it. There might be a couple of SNP faint hearts who say now's not the right time because you look at the opinion polls. So 2012, it was agreed by Cameron that uh, as the SNP had won a majority in the Scottish Parliament, that there would be a referendum um, giving Scotland the opportunity to leave the United Kingdom. And at that point, the, the opinion polls showed that 60% of people in Scotland were going to vote against separation. So it's a two year campaign. The vote actually held in September 2014, just after the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. When, so the world spotlight was on, on Scotland for that reason. And the SNC say, see how marvellous are we held the Commonwealth Games? Yeah, you did. In the United Kingdom, you can achieve all these fantastic things in the UK. You don't need to leave the United Kingdom to achieve marvellous things. Um, but anyway, the polls had tightened. It had been sort of 60% was going to vote pro-union. In the event in 2014, it was 55% of people voted pro-union. Uh, you, you might have thought that would shoot the SNP's fox, but it didn't. Because if you go back to the 79 referendum, March 1979, on devolution, when the separatists, uh, well, they weren't um, not complete separatists, the devolutionists lost, then the SNP went into the doldrums for, for, for 15 years. Um, because the, the SNP done very well in the 74 election. Was it um, 11 MPs elected? But um, by the 80s, they only had two. Um, but at the, the 1979 referendum, the government said that 40% of registered voters 
must vote for devolution for it to happen. Not votes cast, registered voters, bearing in mind that not everybody bothers to vote. So in 79, even though 52% of people voted for devolution, that was under 40% of registered voters had actually voted for it. Only 38% of registered voters had voted for it. So that's why devolution wasn't introduced. Um, but anyway, so devolution came in in 99. Obviously, the referendum in September 97 took effect in 99. And the SNP won office in Holyrood in 2007. It used to be a four-year term, um, but it is, it's now a five-year term. So they won four elections on the trot there. So Nicola Sturgeon is first minister. Um, and there doesn't, doesn't seem any sign that um, the SNP's dominance is coming to an end because they've not just won, they've won by a country mile. So they're not going to be in office forever, but there's every reason to speak, think they're going to win the next election and the election, uh, election after that. Maybe the one after that they might lose. We shall see. But anything could happen at backgammon. A massive scandal about Alex Salmond. That didn't particularly bring them down. Mishandling the economy. They can always blame the English. Don't know what else. Uh, fantastic, charismatic and dynamic leader of the Conservatives of Labour. That could be transformative. A Labour government at Westminster. That could have an effect. If the United Kingdom suddenly rejoined the European Union. There, there are all these wild cards out there. Um, so Nicola Sturgeon is, says she is now determined to hold a second referendum, even though she didn't achieve what, her own threshold for doing so, which was a majority in the Scottish Parliament for the SNP. But um, OK, certainly the regional system, it was a, um, um, uh, about 50 percent of the votes were for pro um, uh, separation parties, the SNP plus the Greens. Um, or indeed, if you look at the um, constituency system, well, um, again, it's, it's she's she's almost there. But, you know, after Brexit, because um, it looked like the most Scots wanted to leave the UK, because remember, Scotland was the most Europhile part of the, of the United Kingdom. Sixty two percent of Scots voted remain. So they want to get back into the United Kingdom. So I would say well, we voted to stay in the United Kingdom in 2014, partly because we we're also staying in the European Union. But, um, and that was one of the arguments for the unionist arguments in 90, 2014. But if you leave the UK, you'll leave the European Union. You might never be allowed to join the European Union, even if you are. That's several years down the road. What will you do in the interim? What will you do about trade? What will you do about a currency? No, you won't be allowed to use the pound sterling. What will you do about defence? You won't be allowed to join NATO, certainly not straight away. Um, but now the UK is out of uh, the European Union anyway. Now, ironically, the European Union is actually helping the Unionists, I think, indirectly. Remember the Catalonia example in 2017. Catalonia held a referendum without the permission of the Spanish government. Could they separate from Spain? They wanted to stay part of the European Union. Majority of Catalans voted for that. But Madrid said, no, absolutely no. We don't recognize that. Does not count. It is a nullity. And Brussels and Strasbourg backed them up to the hilt. Where was the SNP then? Well, they didn't want to offend the European Union, so they were not vociferating for the cause of Catalan separatism. Um, so um, now uh, North Britain requires Westminster's permission for a second referendum. They required Westminster say so for a first one. It said there might be a legal battle royal about this. Is it within the remit of, of uh, Holyrood to legislate for a referendum on such a question? Um, apparently at the moment, it seems that it's not. But anyway, they're, they're the Lords uh, in the, the, the House of, uh, not the House, sorry, the Supreme Court shall decide, the Lords and Ladies. Um, so she could just go ahead and, and hold one anyway, even if it's illegal. And if, if, if she loses it, though, doesn't that screw over the SNP? Well, they lost a referendum before and it actually didn't dent their popularity. They became more popular, not less. Remember the um, uh, 2015 Westminster election, the Scottish National Party got 50 percent of the vote. It was decades before any party had got 50 um, percent uh, of the vote in Scotland in anything. Um, and they won 56 of Scotland's 59 Westminster seats. So um, she uh, but on the other hand, um, if she wins, you can say, that's it. We have to leave now. This is the settled will of the people, but the unionist parties could say, no, it doesn't count. The unionist parties might urge their supporters not to vote, because if it wins, if it wins by a ridiculously high percentage, like 98%, people say, well, it's a farce. It doesn't count for anything. But uh, we shall see. So it looks like there's going to be a sort of protracted uh, political row here. And people say it's a distraction from economic recovery, from dealing with coronavirus. Um, so, I mean, I think she'll go for it. 
If she didn't, some people in her own party might say that she's feeble, that she's missing a golden opportunity, because the SNP might not do so well next time. They'll probably be the largest party, but, you know, they're close to majority. They might be well below majority next time. The trouble is, it's difficult to see how you could have another government in Scotland, because it would have to be a coalition. Now, um, uh, Labour have got the third amount of seats, because that is the second biggest party. Could they work together? It's very hard to envisage. It's tribal. Um, some some Labourites in Scotland are still of the Ernest Bevan, sorry, the Nye Bevan school of thought, and feel a deep, burning hatred for the Tory party, whom they consider lower than vermin. The Liberal Democrats haven't forgotten what happened to them at Westminster when they formed a coalition with the Conservative Unionist Party in 2010. They lost two-thirds of their vote share. Eleven years on, they still haven't recovered. So once bitten, twice shy. And the, the Conservative Unionist Party, would they even want to get into bed with um, uh, Labour or the Liberal Democrats? But, you know, these unpre unprecedented things can happen. The, the SNP, could they form a coalition with one of the others? Possibly with Labour or the Liberal Democrats or the Greens. But that would be on the basis there'll be no more votes on separation. Um, so, you know... Uh, the SNP is the choice of a new generation. If you're a young Scot, that has been the dominant dominant party since 2007. If you're ambitious in politics, that's the party to join. To some extent, even the Conservatives, Labour a bit weaker. I mean, obviously, the, the, the Liberal Democrats and the, and the Greens are, are very minor. Um, so we live in a certainly very interesting times. I mean, I think Nicola Sturgeon will go for it. Um, I mean, I think she'd, she'd, she'd lose, the separatists would lose, probably more narrowly than last time. They lost by 10 percentage points last time. They didn't lose probably about by two percentage points. What's going to happen with the economy recovering? How quickly do we get out of the coronavirus situation? Um, is Brexit seen to be a success, a disaster, or what? Um, Boris Johnson's not going anywhere as Prime Minister. His ratings are sky high. Does Labour at Westminster get a more credible leader? Um, it, it, it's, it's difficult to see. I think the Alaba party will soon be dissolved. They're just going nowhere. Um, so, uh, yes, it was... Um, uh, a fascinating result um, from Scotland uh, this time. Okay, so uh, that's probably just just about all from me. Toodaloo.